All right, guys, so let's look at uh, a little bit of what we I started up in the last video if, um, since you weren't really able to hear me. Uh, I think hopefully it uh, ended up working now. So we're gonna, just going to be looking at uh, the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. Uh, so that's kind of basically stating that uh, the definite integral, so a definite integral, the difference between that and a regular indefinite integral is that it has these certain bounds or these lower limits. Um, so a definite integral, if we are looking at that from a to b of f of x dx, and we know that capital F of x is the antiderivative of f of x, so which basically says if I take the derivative of f of x, or capital F of x, it gives us lowercase f of x. What that actually is, is if we're looking for this answer, and what this is basically saying is we're looking for a specific area underneath a curve. So if we have some curve and we want to find the area underneath it from A to B, uh, you can take the antiderivative anti of B and subtract the antiderivative of A, and you end up getting what that area is underneath that curve. So looking at an example of this, uh, if we have the integral from 0 to 3 of 2x plus 3 dx, so that's basically saying if we have this line 2x plus 3, which is just this line over here, and we want to go from 0 to 3, and we want to figure out, okay, well, what's this area underneath the curve? What's this definite integral? It's from 0 to 3. What we can do is we can take the antiderivative of this, which would be 2x squared over 2 plus 3x over 1, if you want to think about it that way, from... 0 to 3. So if we look at it in this type of sense, what that is, is it's, you want to think about it in terms of f of 3 minus f of 0, where if we plug 3 into this function, you get 9 minus, or sorry, 9 plus 9, which is equal to 18. If you plug in 0, you get 0, so your answer should just be 18 as you go through and look at it. Also, if you wanted to, you could look at this in terms of a trapezoid. So you remember, you can always use geometry. Um, so if we think about this in terms of a trapezoid, the area of a trapezoid, remember, is equal to the height divided by 2 times base 1 plus base 2. So the height is just 3. That's equal to 3 here. So 3 over 2 times base 1 plus base 2. So base 1 is equal to 3. Base 2 is equal to 9. So that would be 12. So 3 over 2 times 12 is actually equal also to 18. Notice that those two answers match up. So uh, this just shows one of the ways to be able to go through uh, and do it. If you go scroll through further down in the notes, I think it's right around uh, page 9. Uh, there's another problem I'm going to look at. It is uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared plus 2x minus 3 all over the square root of x dx. Remember this dx is just a differential. We use it to show that we're integrating or looking at the antiderivative in terms of x. It's similar to like when we are deriving, uh, we use dx, uh, ddx to kind of help us out with that as well. So, um, so what we're actually doing is first is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at actually plugging this x into these values first and kind of simplify my integral. So I have the integral from zero to one of this is going to be x to the 3 halves power plus 2 times x to the 1 half power minus 3x to the negative 1 half power. Okay. So remember, I don't like having this, this square root in there. Um, <clears throat> I always change it so that it has a uh, fraction as uh, up here because it's a lot easier to be able to go through and use the step up. A rule for these three. So if I'm going through and actually integrating those, you would get x to the 5 thirds over 5 thirds, stepping up this first one. Stepping up the second one, you would get plus 2 times x to the 3 halves over 3 halves. That's the second one, stepping that up one. And then this would be minus 3x to the 1 half. So you're stepping up one from the negative 1 half divided by 1 half. So just remember that these values always match up with whatever that should be up there. So it's, so it's a kind of a simple uh, way to go through and do that. And then this is going to be from our 0 to 1. So x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1. So remember, this is really f of 1 minus f of 0, where this is your f of x. So if I plug in 1, you get 3 fifths plus 
that's going to be uh, two, so four thirds. And then the last one's going to be six, so minus six, sorry, not plus. And then if I plug in zero, f of zero is just zero in this case. So you get three fifths plus four thirds minus six. And so I'm actually just gonna leave that just for timing purposes. I'm gonna leave that as my answer. And you can go through and simplify that as well. But that's just kind of as you go through um, and do it, that's kind of a simple way to go through and actually find out if what, no matter what this, what this graph looked like. So if this graph looked, you know, something where it might come down. Well, if your answer is negative, because I think these two numbers, minus six is gonna give you a negative value. Well, this is actually gonna give me a negative va value down here. So it shows that the graph is mostly underneath the x-axis, which is kind of uh, important as you go through and do it. I'm gonna look at one more problem. This is the one on the last page, page 10, uh, if you're following along with the notes. Uh, so that one goes through and the, the question just says, okay, what is the integral of x over x squared minus x minus six. Okay, so this is a little bit different. Why? Because we can't just divide this, each of these into this. Uh, you can't do that because just fraction rules, you're not allowed to do that. Um, so what we need to do is actually partial fraction decomposition or PDF. For those of you uh, that remember this, uh, PDF is one of my favorite things to do, partial fraction decomposition. Um, so what we do is we factor the denominator and we get x over, and you get x minus 3x plus 2. Okay. Also notice that this is a definite or indefinite integral because there are no numbers at the top or bottom of these. So this is just basically saying what's the antiderivative of this function. So we can go through now and uh, to do PDF, if you remember, so this is going to be a over some x minus 3 plus b over some x plus 2 is going to equal this x over x, minus, x plus 2, x minus 3. Okay, so we want to find out what this a and what this b value is, so we cross multiply to be able to get those, and you get a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 3 should just equal whatever this value is, this x value up here. So if we just let x equal to 3, so that would cancel this value out, so you're left with 5a is equal to 3, so a is equal to 3 fifths. If we let x equal to negative 2, so that's going to cancel this value out, you're left with, uh, that's 2, that's negative b is equal to 2, so b is equal to negative 2. So I can take these and I can plug them back up into here. So you're left with the integral of a over x minus 3, so 3 fifths over x minus 3, plus b, which is negative 2, over x plus 2 dx. And now we can actually go through and we know how to integrate this uh, using natural logs. This is going to be 3 fifths times the natural log of x minus 3 absolute values, we went through and talked about that uh, one of the last few days that we were actually in school, minus 2 times the natural log of x plus 2. Now I'm going to go through and do more problems like this. Um, this is just kind of an introduction a little bit more um, as we're going through and looking at it, but this is a really good PDF problem. You'll see this a lot. Uh, I really like these problems um, as it goes through and looks at different uh, things that you learned, not only in like algebra, algebra 2, uh, but also the stuff that we did in pre-calc and being able to split it up and understand how logs actually work here and understanding the integral and then differentiation and how they work back and forth with one another. So other than that, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, hopefully this audio goes through and works. That'd be awesome. Um, but other than that, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, you guys are not going to have any homework uh, that's going to be due. Um, I'm just going to go through and give you the quiz. There might be one or two of these types of problems and then a couple of the problems that similar to those that are on your worksheet. So other than that, you guys have a good day, um, and I'll talk to you guys soon.